this is we're going to use a wrist shake stabilization hand. So, you know, it's called wrist shake to remember how to do it. So, just as you would shake hands, so let's, let's shake hands, but let's not. I'm going to shake his wrist. All right? So I went, uh, I went with the big wrist, there's a big shake hand fake out, and I, and I actually got him by the wrist. Now, if you notice, his forearm is semi-pronated like we were shaking hands. And my thumb web, instead of going thumb web to thumb web, I went over the top and I thumb web him right there, just past or, or just proximal to the distal end of the radius and the ulna, oh, but in particular the radius. So that's this hand. This hand is going to thumb web him at his antecubital fossa and then stick my middle finger on his radiohumeral joint line. That. I'm going to stick his elbow on the side. I'm going to take out the slack by, by holding firmly here, pulling down on his radius, and then giving a little bit of a twist at the end just to spring it open. And I'm palpating it and I'm feeling this happen at the radial head. Joint plate test. That was that was the radiohumeral joint plate test for LAD. I didn't do my pump. That was AST. All right, let's go back. Let's do pump. All right. That was end field. That was end field. That was for the radiohumeral joint for LAD. So why is that not Well, it is. It's joint plate end field. Same thing. From neutral, that first little bit of motion is the joint plate. Take out that slack and spring it. End field. Joint play became, eventually became the end field. Let's do the pump of the joint now. My contacts are thumb in his joint space at the radiohumeral joint, middle finger on his medial side in that joint line, which is the medial epicondyle just below it, inferior to it, right distal to it. Now I have to go and guess how many directions? Right. Four. Four, osteochematic motions. Flexion. Extension, take them to 90, pronate, supinate. So your fingers are in the lateral epicondyle? They are. My thumb is, actually. Thumb and thumb. And the middle, middle fingers on the medial epicondyle is the joint line area. Oh, joint line area. Yeah. So it's, it's contacting partially on the epicondyle, in the joint line, and the rest of the ulna is here. Okay. Okay, I'll do it on this side. So let's pump it first. So again, it's going to be a wrist shake. Find that radial head. Well, there's his depression. There's my thumb sticking right in that joint line. Here's that middle finger finding his medial epicondyle. Four directions. Flexion, extension, taking the 90, pronate, supinate. Of course, with pronation and supination, I'm just focusing on the radial head. It's the only thing that's moving. With flexion and extension, I'm focusing on both. I might do it a couple times. I'll think about the lateral side. Then I'll, then I'll actually think about the medial side. On this side, you did the medial epicondyle, and the other side, you did the lateral epicondyle. I do both at the same time. <laughs> oh, so it's always in the joint line? Hmm. Okay. Yeah, the thumb's always on the radial head, joint line. The middle finger's always on the okay. medial side, medial epicondyle. Okay? Try these? 